Hi there, I'm Mike. Today we're going to have a look at the ESP8266 and the power down mode. When you're running the ESP8266 on batteries, it's a very good idea to make the device sleep as much as possible to save power. Deep sleep is the most powerful of all the sleep modes. In deep sleep mode, it only consumes about 20 microamps. But we're going to make the device hibernate at only 2 to 3 microamps. That's 10% of the power consumption of the deep sleep mode. I'm going to show you how to achieve this and also tell you why many makers fail to do it. First off, have a look at this ESP01. We're going to demonstrate the same with an ESP12F later in the video as well. The sketch starts by turning on the LED for 2.5 seconds and then it goes into deep sleep mode. In this mode it only consumes around 20 microamps, just as described in the datasheet. But look what happens when we remove the 10K pull-up resistor. Now it only consumes about 3 microamps. That's close to about one tenth of the power consumption. We're going to refer to this mode as power down mode. We read about this in a forum post a few years ago. See the link in the description. But we also found many makers trying it and not being able to recreate the power down mode. And we want to share what might be stopping many. If we have a look at the minimal diagram on how to wire the ESP8266, you clearly see that you must pull the CHPD pin high. CHPD stands for chip power down. A lot of modules labels it EN or CHEN for chip enable. We're just going to call it the enabled pin to make it easier. It is true that we need to pull this pin high for the ESP to operate, but many of the newer ESP8266 modules have a pull-up resistor under the hood, or the metal shield at least. This is contradictory to what we see in the diagram, and as a consequence we see many makers are not aware of this, and still ask their own 10K resistor. Have a look at these ESP8266 modules. We have the ESP12E, 12F, 12N, and 12S as well as the O7S. We also have the ESP01 and the ESP01S. If we use a multimeter, we can see that the ESP07S has a pull-up resistor of 12K when we measure the enable pin and VCC. The ESP12S has the same pull-up resistor, and also the ESP01S. The ESP01, on the other hand, has no pull-up resistor, nor does the ESP12E, 12F, or 12N. So on these modules, you need to add your own pull-up resistor according to the minimal diagram. But on the modules ending with an S, there's no need to add it as it's built in. There might be additional modules that have this pull-up resistor, so use your multimeter to check. Here I opened the shield of an ESP12S, and here we can see the pull-up resistor. On ESP01S, the resistor is located here. That means that if you've been following the recommended wiring and added your own pull-up resistor with an ESP12S, and then try to remove this resistor to power down the module, it has no effect. Although you removed one pull-up resistor, there's still one there pulling the pin high, keeping the ESP enabled. Additionally, it might not only be the modules that have been stopping you, but also the breakout boards have a pull-up resistor. On the ESP-01S, you can simply remove the resistor. It's not recommended to remove the shield of the ESP-12 to remove the resistor. Then it's much better to simply buy a different version. But on the breakout boards, on the other hand, you can just simply desolder it. So let's have a look again at the ESP-01S. Here we remove the resistor. It's currently in power down mode, so let's wake it up by adding the pull-up resistor. 
then it turns on the LED for two and a half seconds and then goes into ordinary deep sleep. We have to select microamps to see the deep sleep current. It deep sleeps at 19 microamps. But when we now put it in power down mode by removing the resistor, it only consumes 3 microamps. Let's wake it up again. First, we have to set the multimeter back to milliamps to avoid overload. Then we reconnect the pull-up resistor to wake it up. The LED comes on again and the ESP goes into deep sleep at 19 microamps. And again, in power down mode, it only consumes 3 microamps. Let's do the same with an ESP12F. We removed the resistor on the breakout board and added our own on the breadboard. It's the same sketch, so the LED comes on for 2.5 seconds, then it goes into deep sleep mode at only 18 microamps. When we remove the pull-up resistor, it goes into power down mode at only 3 microamps, the same as the ESP01. Here we demonstrate the same, just without the multimeter. This is perfect for battery operated projects that spend much more time off than on and that need an external input to wake up. Now you can truly run your IoT projects on a coin cell battery. For tiny IoT projects we still love using the good old ESP01 as long as we only need a few pins. But for a lot of sensor that's enough. An ESP01 with a coin cell battery gives us a tiny footprint for our IoT devices. But there's still one very important thing left. If we have a sensor or a button triggering the enable pin that turns on the ESP, we need to avoid that the ESP shuts down before it's done doing what it's supposed to do. Let's say you want to build a mailbox notifier. So you connect a button or a read switch to the door of your mailbox. Every time the door is open, you want to send yourself a notification. So we need to add a bit of circuitry to make sure the ESP do not shut down until the notification is sent, although the door might be closed. This is almost the same schematics that was posted in the forum post, so please see the link in the description as well. First, connect ground of the ESP to ground, then connect VCC to 3.3 volts and pull the reset pin high with a 10k resistor to avoid accidental reboots. Let's connect a switch in between 3.3 volt and the enable pin. In case you want to use a sensor that outputs a low signal when it's not sensing anything, make sure you connect a diode as well so you don't force the pin low later on. If the button is pressed, the enable pin is high and the ESP powers on. But to avoid the ESP accidentally going into boot mode, on startup, we need to pull GPIO2 and GPIO0 high. Connect a 1K resistor to the button as well. We're gonna do the same for GPIO0, but connect it to the other side of the diode. When the button is pressed, the enable pin, GPIO2 and GPIO0 are all pulled high. Now, there's just one final resistor we need to connect. To avoid the enable pin, we'll be left floating when it's not pulled high, at a 10k resistor to ground. In your sketch, make sure you tell GPIO0 to go high first thing when the ESP is turned on. Once you're done processing your code, set the pin low to put the ESP in power down mode. This way, when you press the button, you start up the ESP. Then GPIO0 is continuing to pull the enable pin high, so the ESP stays on also when you release the button. When your code then sets GPIO0 low, it'll enter power down mode. There's only one more thing to consider. What if the mailbox is full and the door can't be closed? As a failsafe, after you set GPIO0 to low, tell the ESP to go into normal deep sleep mode. If there's no problems, the ESP will then go into power down mode when you set GPIO0 low. But if the external input is still keeping the module on, it will, as a backup, go into deep sleep. And that's the full circuit.
I'm going to show you a blooper and a big no-no when using a hot air rework station. Have a look at the breadboard. I was going to remove the pull-up resistor, but the breadboard is melting. I was in a hurry filming. Luckily, Chris, my brother, is on vacation and will hopefully not notice. He's still mocking me for when I cut the silicone mats and melted the cutting board within 30 seconds of each other a few months ago.